The most common causes for uh, shoulder replacement are um, osteoarthritis, which is the wear and tear arthritis of the smooth cartilage in the joint, rheumatoid arthritis, which is an inflammatory arthritis where the body attacks itself. Also, it could be after a significant trauma or injury to the shoulder, you're more prone to develop post-traumatic arthritis. Also, patients can have chronic rotator cuff tears that weren't addressed or weren't fixed, and they be, go on to progress to osteoarthritis or secondary osteoarthritis. By far the most common one, though, is primary osteoarthritis. The most common symptoms associated with shoulder osteoarthritis are pain in the shoulder, and a lot of times they'll complain of pain at night. They say it's worse at the end of the day or when they're trying to rest or lay down at night. Often, most often, the pain is on the side of the shoulder, but also behind the shoulder. Another common symptom of shoulder osteoarthritis is a limited range of motion of the shoulder. As the shoulder arthritis progresses, the shoulder becomes more stiff. So patients will have difficulty with overhead lifting or reaching above their waist level, and most often that is also associated with pain. The most common non-surgical treatment for shoulder osteoarthritis would include physical therapy, anti-inflammatory or anti-arthritis medicines, and in intra-articular injections. And we will try to maximize and, and prevent surgery as long as we can, but when the conservative measures don't work anymore, it's time to proceed with an arthroplasty. What occurs during surgery for shoulder replacement, the shoulder itself is a ball and socket joint. And the ball and the socket rub on each other, and they have a smooth cartilage on it that allows them to slide over smoothly. And patients that need shoulder replacement, that cartilage is worn and they have bone on bone rubbing. What we do in surgery is that we replace the ball with a metal ball. And then on the socket side, we resurface the socket with a plastic piece that will act like the new cartilage. And then the metal ball will slide over the new plastic piece and act like the original joint did. There are two basic types of shoulder replacement that we do now. There's a traditional shoulder replacement where we replace the ball and the socket in a traditional manner, and that is used on patients that have functioning rotator cuff tendons. And the rotator cuff is required to move the shoulder after a regular shoulder replacement. Unfortunately, there are some patients that don't have functioning rotator cuff tendons or have had chronic rotator cuff tears that have been neglected and it's progressed on to develop osteoarthritis. In those patients, we use a reverse shoulder replacement. And it's called a reverse shoulder replacement because now we make the ball the socket and the socket the ball. So this is an example of a right shoulder and this would what a reverse replacement would look like. So in my left hand here is the socket of the shoulder. And normally we would, in traditional replacement, just cover that with a, a piece of plastic to act like the new socket. Well, in reverse, you can see it has a metal ball on it. So we've now made the ball the socket and the socket the ball. The right hand is the humerus bone, and you can see that there's a socket there with a piece of artificial cartilage that allows this to articulate, and now that will allow it to move, and that allows them to have a fulcrum to articulate and use other muscles that are functioning to elevate their arm.